and welcome. How's it going, Adam? How's it going, Casey? Pretty good. Um, Death Becomes Her. Yes, this should be an interesting show. Yeah, because, I think it is. Well, we well we talked briefly uh, before the show that uh, I probably I feel like I should have rewatched it. Yeah. Again, because usually yeah. usually I've watched it within a few hours of the show, so it's it's pretty fresh in my head. Right. Um, not not the case so much tonight, though. I do remember. I, I remember enough of it. I think. Yeah. I think we'll be good. Now I do apologize. Last week, ladies and gentlemen, I um I came into a um. A predicament that I was in. Uh, Such is life. It happens. Much um, unlike Bruce Willis um, in Death Becomes Her. Yeah, quite. Yeah, luckily, um, your predicament was not quite so... Uh, dire. Dramatic, even, as yeah. the music would suggest. Yeah. But uh, it was my fault, so I do apologize. And I left Casey uh, on the uh, on the, uh, the lurch, I guess. Nah, it's, it's okay. So I do apologize. But this week... We're going to dive into uh, Death Becomes Heard the yes. best that we can. We yes. want you to join along, um, and we want you to go ahead and comment, like, and share the uh, the video, please. And before yes. we get in, <clears throat> let's go ahead and get into the plugs of the show. We have the social media plugs, which is Facebook, Spotify, YouTube. Please go and check those out, The Other People Show. If you, if you can't remember The Other People Show, tops. T O P S tops the other people show. That's good. Is that like a acronym? Uh, acronym, yes. Okay. I was trying to remember. I'm glad you did. I was trying yeah. to think of the word too. So uh, yeah, no, that's a good one too. So yeah, and, and fairly easy to remember. Nice, you know. Noted for future uh, merchandise yes. marketing. Yes, yes. So <laughs> we're doing uh, in dreams as cross the 400 uh, mark nice. uh, the other day. So that's great. That's awesome. And we are also. Um, Invited to, uh, I don't want to say invited, but we're going to be screening in competition in Dreams, uh, a different version. And I think I saw the Facebook post uh, 64 days Nice at okay. the FrankenCon in Knoxville, Tennessee. FrankenCon in Knoxville. Yeah, so that'll be cool. In Dreams Film yeah. Festival. Nice. So the top 10 get invited to the fest. Oh, okay, only, super. Only, only 30 entries, top 10 get in. Okay. Like get into the actual. Uh, I, uh, so they take thirty down to ten. Yeah, and then goes, the ten get invited. I think. And then from those ten, yeah, they, yeah. Hey, those are pretty good odds, really. Yeah. Especially if of the thirty, it's already in that first group of thirty. That's. Yeah. Nice. Uh, yeah. No, this. Uh, this is only basically what I'm about to say uh, will only pertain to the people that watch the show, but we off often well every show opens the, the show up with the score or a song from the movie we're watching. Yes. So tonight obviously was uh, Death Becomes Her. But the next song that popped up on YouTube happened to be the theme from Jacob's Ladder. Wow, interesting. Yeah. Not uh, not what I would expect to be anything like the same type of music no, so, or movie. And I can't remember who who did the music for Jacob's Ladder. I mean, is it possible uh, that... Maurice a- Jar, J-A-R-R-E... Jar? I, yeah, jar? I'm not sure. Jarre, Jarre, maybe. Jarre. Is it French, possibly? Yeah. But I will say, um, not any, uh, you know, anything remotely the same, but do go check out our episode of Jacob's Ladder. Yeah. Absolutely. And uh, go watch the movie. No, yeah, they're all good. It's on, uh, I think, Amazon Prime. Yeah. I think is, is what it's on. I think, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what we watched. It. So, yeah. So, uh, no, it was a good show. Yeah. They're all good shows. I mean, this is almost like a shameless plug for ourselves, but um, I always go back and check out the show within a couple of days yeah. when it hits Spotify, mostly so I can check out the audio. Note to self, I need to keep the microphone a little closer to myself because I was kind of, I could tell I was distant. I think at mine times. is too close. Um, so, but they're they're really good shows. And I was sitting there with my family the other morning, a couple of mornings ago, and I was listening to the the menu episode, right? Uh, the last one, and I was just like, oh, I listened to you know twenty minutes of it, maybe fifteen. I was like, oh, yes, it's pretty good. And I would just shut it off, and uh, they're like, whoa, 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 you know, like we're kind of enjoying that. I was like, okay, well, we're gonna listen to it, but it was good. Nice. They're, they're all good. All they're all good when I go back and listen to them. Just on, honestly, they're good. They're good shows. Yeah, I've. It's funny that you've said that. I've had uh, a couple of people have said that, and they said that you and I are a good team. I've heard that. Yeah, by yeah. Several, the the conversation is very natural and organic. Yeah. And I think we've said this before. 
that I think it plays in our favor that we we don't watch the movies together. We don't discuss them. No. Uh, within 10, 15 minutes. Yeah, just the drive here. The drive over here. Yeah, I mean, that's it. So And, and we both have a love, uh, a mutual love of film. Yeah. Not just, I think there's a difference between movies, and all of them are movies, but there's sure. movies, and then there's films. Sure. And I don't think films are what the mass audience might not enjoy they're more challenging right right whereas the the typical movie or blockbuster yeah is not as challenging toward ever it's a straightforward yeah. well and the even the part. style of movies yeah has, has changed over time you know and that may go back to to the generation we grew up in you know we're from the 90s we yeah. talk about the 90s all day long we were talking about that right before the show but you know i can remember when we were when we were doing killing zoe and I was kind of researching the movie a little bit, and it was talking about you know Roger Ebert again. Always good reviews his art to go to. Yeah, I think so. Uh, but I enjoy watching also in the setting of um, if you can actually get the video review where he's like him. Oh and, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's it's cool if, if it's old enough. Yeah, and he has somebody else with him. It seems like we've had this discussion. It was before. Roper. Oh well, yeah, 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 yeah. Ebert no, it was and Roper. Roper. Yeah, after that, that's right. A, a, a side note that no one would care about. I I looked up Roper three or four days ago. No really? joke. Huh, Actually, no. To be honest with you, it was uh, yesterday morning. Wow! And was, here we are. It was so. when I was subbing, <laughs> just to see how much he had changed. Oh yeah, he had changed quite a bit. I don't even remember what he looks like now. Well, he, when, once I, I, I only remember what Ebert looks like really, and that's just vaguely. Well, I knew I knew Ebert. But uh, Roper, I had a vague idea. I knew he had dark hair, and I I'd forgotten about the glasses. But he had dark hair and glasses, and he you know relatively thin, and uh, that was my last recollection. Well, he's about twenty five years older now, yeah, than I last yeah. saw him. Wow, and yeah, uh, they're both about as dated as as this movie is. Yeah. This movie felt dated when I watched it. Yeah. Of all the movies we watched. It was the one that felt the most dated. I think so too. Because again, you know, I'll say I, I say it almost every show, uh, just to make the point. Like I, I try and keep in my head, you know, longevity of the movie. You know, like timeless and stuff. Like could this come out today with minor adjustments, and and still be a good movie? And I was like, could this? I feel like it had to have. It would need a lot of special effects adjustments. It would probably be insane. Yeah, but I don't know. But even then, like, I wonder, was that part of the corniness of it? It even like because some of it, I I can remember the scene where her head's like twisted around, and you're looking at her neck, and I'm like, I don't know, it's like I'm torn between, and maybe it's because I was watching it on a high def TV. That's true. That seems to throw off movies sometimes. That I, is true. High def throws me off sometimes because sometimes it draws too much attention to what. It like it takes away this there, I don't know, film haze almost. There's a there's a certain look that I love movies, theatrical movies to have. Yeah, and the theater had it even with all before it was all digital. Even with the little you know you had the cigarette burn right before the next reel would come. Yeah, on. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then if you look closely, you could see little black dots everywhere. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it had a look to it even after it was cleaned up. Yeah, and on the TV you're talking about. Um, that is very high definition. Yeah, no, I was going to say you've watched it. No, it's like yeah. super high def. Probably one so. of the most high def TV. No, I've I know, ever and it watched. throws me off because I'll watch movies sometimes, newer release movies, and it's weird because it has a feeling again because it just takes away that film graininess that's even just with up until the last couple of years, even. Yeah. And I feel like I'm watching something low budget, unless it's just like really high on the special effects. But if it's just a film, yeah, just a basic scene of two guys sitting in a studio making a podcast, uh, it looks almost low budget, yeah, because it's so high def that it's like you can almost, you know, and it's crazy that TVs and that stuff has almost come that way. Well, see, that's what I sometimes think whenever I have made something, you know, made some, some you know, little productions that it looks low budget because of that high def. Yeah. And I'd rather not. It's not that I would not want it, but I don't think every project necessitates No, that. no, there's some things. Sometimes it works. Yeah, no, sometimes it works. And other things I've watched, it's like, wow, this is like, this feels weird. It that takes you out this. of the movie. Yeah, a little bit. Because yeah. it, it almost starts to remind you that it's a, a bit of a movie, which is weird. 
because it should be more realistic. And 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 deaf, he pours on people's faces. Yeah, but I'm like this is Hollywood. Like I miss that. Or is that tint, that haze, yeah. that, you know, wh- whatever you want to call it. So, filter. Filter. Exactly. We're, we're getting away from the movie now. No, we're good, though. But at any rate, oh, oh, I was talking about her neck being twisted up. Yeah, yeah. You can almost tell it was, like, costumey. You know what I mean? The twist. Yeah. But, you yeah. can't, and you know what? I did notice, I, I had not watched this film in a while. I had not in, oh, my God. Oh boy! Long you said a, a long now. I it's been a long time, probably since back in when it ninety two. I think really, gosh, see, it almost feels like it was eighties. Even yeah. See, for this to be one of the nineties movies, early nineties feels the least nineties of the nineties movies yeah. we've done. Now, um, I did see it in the theater when it came out, and I've seen it. I can't remember if I did or not. Um, one, let's see, two times since. So this this was only the third time I've seen it. I can only and, think um, of one one time, honestly, maybe twice. I, 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 I'm I'm curious to dive in. So, for those of you who don't know, this is Death Becomes Her. It's uh, about an older actress who is threatened by her rival. Then she takes an immortality treatment in order to stay younger, and then chaos ensues. Most definitely yeah. ensues, yeah, for sure. So this has Meryl Streep, Bruce Willis, and Goldie Hawn. Directed by Robert Zemeckis, who uh, was the director of Castaway, Forrest Gump, who framed Roger Rabbit. Yeah. Back to the Future series, Romancing the Stone. Yeah, well, interesting note on that. It seemed like I read on my research of this that uh, he followed up this movie, I'm pretty sure, with Forrest Gump. You're right. Was what, what yep. followed this one up. Yep. Which is interesting because Forrest Gump is a far better movie. Yeah. Far, far better yeah. movie. A uh, very different movie, but. Yeah. Yeah. So the budget for this movie was fifty five million dollars. Um it made fifty eight million in the US box office, over a hundred million worldwide. So it was considered a mild success. Yeah. Fifty five percent rotten tomatoes and sixty one percent audience um score. Yeah. So you know, those were pretty middle of the road. Yeah. Statistics. I honestly I can kind of agree with that. Me too. I kind of fall middle of the road with Me the too. Movie. Me like, too. There's parts of it I like, but then I was like, uh I don't know. Yeah. So a few uh, interesting facts. Meryl Streep accidentally uh scarred Goldie Hahn's cheek with a shovel during the fight scene. That was Oh, was, and for real. Yeah. Uh-huh. The film was one of the first that used photorealistic human skin software huh and i was watching um, interesting which i was watching goes a, back to my a video about this and without this film uh jurassic park possibly would have been a lot harder to do but wow. a lot of people that worked on this product went ahead and then they started working on things based upon this movie yeah and that um, process and gave us dinosaurs to, wow yep, yep. that's interesting this, okay, well, that's cool. Well, see, that gives a lot of credit to this movie that people. So yeah, yeah. So another interesting thing I found uh, uh, was techniques used. Sure, this was going to be another Tales from the Crypt movie. The original trailer to this movie, I could see that has the Tales from the Crypt theme on it. Huh. Interesting. Yeah, and I went back and I did find it. It is on YouTube. So yeah. uh, I wish I had it to show. My cameras went out, but I think my voice is still here. Um, and Bruce Willis replaced Kevin Klein in the role of Ernest. Huh. Kevin Klein dropped out of this to do the movie Dave. Interesting. Which I've actually never seen the movie Dave. Uh, is that the one where he's president? Yeah. Or something? Yeah. I vaguely remember it. So I've never seen it, but I've heard of it. it. Yeah. But there, if you've if you've ever noticed in in a lot of um, especially. They may still do it now. They would always release, if often, similar type movies. Sure. Like, uh, sure. you know, Kevin Klein had Dave uh, in like 94. 95, Michael Douglas had one called The American President. Yes, You right. know, you had Volcano. I remember that then one. Then you had Dal- Dante's Peak. Oh, Don- yeah. And then you had Armageddon. Then you had Deep Impact. Oh, right. So, right. You, know, you had a lot of those sure. type things going on. Sure, sure, sure. But there was nothing quite like Death Becomes Her, really. No. So No, that's true. That's no. true. And of all those, it was, it was about the only comedy, yeah. it seems like, that you mentioned. So, now, like, this movie, honestly, like, the Tales from the Crypt is an interesting, uh, 
aspect in a way because I could see it being done. I could see this movie being redone uh, with less of the comedic value to it. Yeah, yeah. As more of a like just a straight up dark, uh, dark movie. I mean, because you could make it pretty, you make it pretty graphic and like crazy given the premise of the movie. You know. Now, did you um, did you like Tales from the Crypt? I uh, yeah, I only loosely watched it when I was younger. Honestly, I wasn't I, when it was popular. When I was younger, I just wasn't really into right that whole kind of genre. I appreciate that yeah, more now. Right. Uh, There's a couple of episodes I've not seen many of them, um, and I I didn't really watch them when they were on HBO. They used to yeah. air in like a like I guess a, a TV TV um, friendly version. Sure. On like a some late night channel I can't recall but there there is one I do want to recommend since it was brought up it's, it's called Easel Kill Ya Easel Kill Ya Easel Kill Ya yeah Eas and, uh, like Easel like, like a painting like a painting okay. yeah. Oh, yeah and Tim Roth um, oh, I like Tim Roth he uh, who is he Mr. Um, Pink Wait, Mr. Pink yeah. yeah well yeah Mr. Pink wait was he Mr. Pink he was Mr. Orange yeah, I was gonna say I cannot yeah. remember which Steve one. Steve Buscemi's Mr. Pink. Yeah, because he he argues he's like I don't want to be Mr. Pink. How about I mean movie. that is a good movie. That's a good one. It leads us, you know, it's one of the well, you know, it's one of my favorite ones. Yeah, yeah. Well, now we're venturing the Tarantino yeah. again. <laughs> we'll have to do the ranking of Tarantino. One no, time. we could. Yeah, we should definitely do that. But Easel Kill Ya is a good one. Um, is one of the best Tales from the Crypt episodes. Um. And it was a little bit of an inspiration for In Dreams. Ah, uh -huh. nice. Okay, the painting well, aspect, um, plus Shelley is an actual painter as well. But that was that was uh, a little bit of it. So yeah, if uh, it's about it's on YouTube, it's like a twenty five minute episode. So uh -huh. I suggest uh, check it out. Yeah, cool. But we'll get into the plot and the story of Death Becomes Her. What do you think about that, Casey? Uh, the plot and the story. I mean, it's. It's pretty good, and like you said, given the time frame, it is pretty original. Um, it makes sense that it would have come out of Tales from the Crypt, given yeah. the time frame, too. Uh, so I, I like it. Uh, the comedic value is pretty good. In a way, it, I mean, it's a dark comedy. Yeah. That's what it is. And so, I mean, it's definitely got some funny moments. Uh, I, I know one of my biggest takes, like when you mentioned Kevin Klein. And, and Bruce Willis, as far as the leads, like I could kind of see either or, and it makes me wonder if Bruce Willis's look in the movie was directly supposed to half mimic because I could see it like with the mustache yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Uh, so I could almost see Kevin Klein playing that role because this uh, is not your typical Bruce Willis. No, especially no, up until this point. Yeah, no, you know? no, because he. No, he's pretty much just kind of action starry coming out at Moonlight in the 80s and yeah. stuff. You and know he had, what I, mean? I mean, he'd only had maybe, what, Moonlighting and uh, the Blind Date movie. Oh, I forgot about that movie. And uh, <laughs> oh, Hudson wow. Hawk. So that was Hudson his only Hawk. three really yeah. comedic. Wow, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And everything else had been action for the most part. Yeah. So, I mean, the cast is, I mean, it's a big name cast. I mean, they're a pretty big name at that time. Yeah, even, yeah. Really getting there. Uh, so it's decent. One of the things that kept tripping me out, though, was like Meryl Streep. I like I was watching this. And I was like, I know this is like early '90s, and I swear the woman looked the same as I ever remember looking in any movie she's yeah. ever been in. Man, like the gray hair, like is this like perpetual? Just I don't know, man. She got to that one a age and pretty much almost stayed just there. Stayed there. It seems no, I don't like, really know yeah. what she looks like. I mean, I, I can't remember now the last is, newest movie I or saw. Or she's with just her. like locked in my head at that. At that, I can't. Th uh, the last thing I'm kind of thinking of, which did she do the? Uh, what was it? Uh, some movie about Prada. Devil wears Prada. Devil wears Prada. Yeah, I have she seen that one. The, uh, that's the last really thing that pop, pops in my head. Me too. And see, that was and, and she 16 even years looks ago. The same. Yeah, she looks the same. And so that was 16, and so now you're talking. Now see, isn't that crazy? That that's prior. 16 years ago. Yeah, wow. Jeez, what the wheel of time. I know. <laughs> Going too fast. Too fast, but unless you take an immortality potion and yes. no worries. Unless unless your immortality is spent in some really 
messed up way like is what ends wouldn't up it be terrible to, if you took took like the immortality pill or or whatever potion whatever it may be is what it was yeah when you're let's say you take it when you're you know you don't know what it is and you happen to take it when you're like 72 oh my goodness and you're stuck at age 72 stuck at 72 for eternity yeah for eternity yeah wow wouldn't that be terrible that would be crazy no, well, I don't know, man. It, it would depend. I mean, honestly. you would have great knowledge. I was gonna say, if you could take that wisdom and just keep going, unless you become, I don't know, like, but would you want the seventy-two year old body? Well, that's though, the thing, you know. know? It depend. It would kind of depend on what kind of health you're in. You probably, want, I mean, I would probably want if I would think probably the thirty-two year old body, and then like, then health, what happens? You know, like, and well, when you think about immortality too. See, I didn't consider this topic of conversation right. yeah. coming into it. I mean, that's basically the movie, you know. But like you I would imagine you'd have to be willing to really change and adapt. I mean, because think about just people that now, just in today's society, are like 80, 90 years old with the way the liberal swing, and I don't mean that politically speaking. Yeah. I'm just more like just more inclusive while we're simultaneously making, you know, labels, but that's a whole nother topic of conversation, but they can't imagine, you know, it blows their minds, yeah. you know, like gay couples openly out in the open interracial relationships, you know what I mean? Just like a black man being president. Oh my God, right. lost their minds, you know, but so imagine that forever. Yeah, because you're never gonna die. You know what I mean, and so and you're constantly going, and you would like a like, <laughs> you're like what kind of like she says in this. It almost be it almost becomes like the knowledge that you because like we say, oh that'd be a cool thing, but would it really? Because that knowledge eventually is kind of just gonna be obsolete, yeah. really. Um, especially if you just take the the trajectory that we're kind of on. Uh, digitally speaking and everything, yeah. which opens up the door to a whole nother movie. Like, have you seen Transcendence? I have with, with uh, Johnny, Depp. Johnny Depp, yeah, I just have. the whole uploading your yeah. your consciousness, basically, uh, which is a whole yeah other that movie thing, but caught me, which is very much kind of a that movie took me in a different place than I thought it was going. Yeah, I don't have to remember. I remember being very interested in it because you know, well, we grew up, you know, we're Gen X, you know, and and so like while we didn't, I feel like it's it's just another one of the things in the nineties. I feel like Gen X kind of built the infrastructure of the internet yeah it kind of as we know it um and we were at the very you know seeing you know like all the, that dot com era stuff napster was, yeah i mean it's all like you know when chat rooms were a thing it's yeah. all very very 90s yeah the chat um, rooms <laughs> you know what i mean and some of, and, and again some of your you know your biggest things now that are being used are all are all gen xers i mean Elon Musk could take him or leave him as he will, but I'm not sure of his age, but I'm thinking, I mean, well, honestly, obviously Gen Xer, because I think they take, honestly, I think they t take that generation pushing back up into like late 60s. Yeah, I think um, so. So, yeah, you know, so it makes, it makes sense. I don't remember how like, oh, oh, digital trajectory. Of, yeah. Of everything and, and uploading your, that's you know, where it's going. So it makes it makes sense because we're, we're very much a digital society. Anymore. Oh yeah, that's a whole another topic of conversation. Well, see, I was but people are thinking... seeking digital immortality. Oh, there's a there's a project. That it makes me think of it as far as immortality thing goes. Uh, Google has it going. I remember I was researching something one time, and they were talking about something. They put like I want to say a third of their like maybe research and development towards basically immortality. Okay, and it was called Project. I want to say Conrad. But I don't know if that's what it was. Right. I'll have to find out. But at any rate, that's what happens to these women in this show. And it's through, it's Hollywood. Yeah. And they want to live forever. Beauty is well, a thing. It, yeah. And it's, you know, I thought the plot in the story fairly original. You know, yes. especially even now, you know, I can't think of another movie that I would could really say, oh, it's like Death Be. I, I never referenced Death Becomes Her in another movie. No, you know? no. Oh, that movie's like Death Becomes Her. Oh, yeah, it's a little bit of Death Becomes... No one... Yeah, or Death Becomes Her is even like kind of like this one because I can't think of anything. No. So really I think it hand. is a... you know, It's a, very original, which is interesting that it hasn't been... Like remade, really. Yeah, like a reboot of it. Yeah. 
So I think we both agree that that, you know, the plot and the story, the original good. Um, I did find, I did find some part of the, it didn't follow the three act structure I noticed because I thought it got, I, I didn't realize or remember it taking so long for them to take the potion. Yes. Agreed. It was very slow in part. Yeah. I got super dozy at one moment. Yeah. The, you know, and I, and I like, and I appreciate, and I know in the nineties they had the full credit sequence, but we just listened to a moment ago, you know, wh while we were doing the show, the Meryl Streep uh, opening, and it's like a two and a half or three minute opening song. Yeah. Yeah. And it's showing that she's also, you know, she's now, um, she's on the stage, you know, Goldie Hawn's out, I think out in the audience watching Ernest is out there clapping. Yes. You know, whatever. It. But. I did think the opening first act drug a little. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. Because it showed, uh, you know, Goldie Hawn's character, you know, eating. She got real fat. Yep. Um, and then All it from showed depression because, yeah. And it never did really, I never, the, from what I can remember, why were they both after Ernest? I don't know exactly because. Because of his money? I guess what. What was he? Was he a professor or something? It seems like, see, I don't even half remember now. Well, see, at one point, she, what Goldie Hawn was. says, you were a brilliant man, and she's turned you into an undertaker. She does say that at one point. Yeah. And he, uh, but it's after they've already taken the potion, I think. Or, yeah, I can't no, figure I it know. out either, because he's not, he's very kind of. He's scholarly, I think, something. Yes, scholarly. that's what I'm thinking so, too. And he's. And, uh, but, you know, both characters, goofy. neither. Bit goofy, yeah. He's a bit goofy. Yeah. Neither neither woman in the movie seems like this would be the prize that they would be after. No, I know. He's got like that mustache, glasses. Yeah. Well, and so maybe, well, because it's Hollywood, maybe it's just the adoration. Could be. Could be. Because he's just. But I never did understand, and maybe there's something we missed or can't recall, but I never Possibly. did understand 100% why him. You know, other yeah, than, you know, the movie. But, um, you know, that leads us to the characters. Um, there's basically three characters in the entire movie. For the yeah, part, yeah, pretty, pretty say. much. And there, yeah, everybody else is just supporting. Yeah. Um, and the other, the fourth major character, I guess, would be um, the lady that gives the potion. Because she has the most speaking lines, I guess. Yeah, I mean... Uh, Isabella it, Rossellini really. is her, is her yes, name. Yes, that is who it is. I was trying to remember who it was because I knew it was it was a name. She's also in uh, the David Lynch movie uh, Blue Velvet. Uh, well, I saw you posted something about David. Yeah, Lynch, I was, uh, which I was, got me super. I was like, oh my goodness! Now we open some. Yeah, uh, what was that one like? The Highway or something? Is that what Lost was? Highway? Lost Highway. Yeah, I think we need to do Lost Highway. Should we just do Twin Peaks? No, wait, did he do Twin Peaks? He, he did Twin Peaks, the show, um, two seasons, then yeah, that's canceled, what I and then they did long hiatus, and then it came back in like 2017. Yeah. Um, which I've never seen all of the show. And then Twin Peaks Fire Walk With Fire Me, Fire Walk With Me, yeah. Is a prequel and sequel. Okay. Did David Lynch do those two? That's yeah. what I thought. Yeah. But Lost Highway. Um, that's some. Crazy shit there. I've I've never watched it all at one time. I loosely, very loosely remember. I know it's uh, I want to say Jeff Daniels, Bull, Bill Pullman. Oh, Bill Pullman. Yeah. Bill Pullman. That's yeah. right. That's right. Uh, so, and I can't uh, remember the female character off the top of my head either. Patricia Arquette. Wow. Yeah. Good memory. Man. Yeah. You got fantastic yeah. movie <laughs> trivia. It's incredible. <laughs> oh. It, it blows my mind. So uh, <laughs> I don't. I, like, where did you just pull that from, dude? You know, it, here's the weird thing it's that we'll amazing. get back in. When I we used, need to find a trivia night that has a cash prize. God, and I wish we could go in just movie trivia. And I will say this: um, you need I was, to build a team. I had a team. It was me, and Lana, and my uh, friend Lacey. We did win Saved by the Bell trivia. No shit. At Fishtails. No doubt. Wow. And I will say it was because of me. <laughs> I will have to say that. I will have to. That's well, hey, I mean, yeah. Uh, but, you know, if it, were, if it were yeah. 90s, you know, 80s, 90s, and 2000s, I'm good on. Today, pretty decent. I don't know as many of the newer actors and actresses, but. No. 
a lot of it is not it, it's it's not presented the same way as it was back in the, even five years ago. Right. There's so many different channels that there's no way you can watch as many movies. Like no, like it could, yeah. I would watch seventy movies a year back in high school, and that was right. going to the theater seventy times per year. Yes, because I right. used to have a notebook. No joke. Tenth, eleventh, tenth grade until about four, four or five years ago, I wrote down. Well, a couple of years ago, I would type it on my phone. Right. But you know, write it down all every movie that I'd seen. Nice. And I that's think, uh, that's some dedication. I think that's one of the reasons that I might have. A good memory about well sure well because if like you write too. anything down that's just yeah yeah i mean it helps go into your memory and i, I, I often microphone read uh, a lot about david lynch too so well no interesting stuff i hadn't i hadn't considered any of that stuff until i saw that post yeah oh uh, yeah so uh, but yeah i like all the i gotta be honest i um i do like the characters even though their motives because if you think about it Ernest is not the best character either he goes from one lady to the next. No, he's kind of like I don't. I don't even know. He flirts with uh, one of them when he's with the other. With one. the other, yeah. He's just kind of like. So he's really no. It doesn't seem to think anything of it. No, it's not even mentioned. No, it's just okay. The whatever. females are just kind of against each other. Yes, they no, don't which like and each it's other. Hollywood. And it, it is, which is very. I mean, there's a lot of little. Uh, societal uh statements for lack of a better yeah way to put it um in the movie yeah because even even in real life i mean it was still I feel like even at the time it was a little bit over the top then what you think a little bit it's well sure, sure yeah sure, sure, some sure. of the things well yeah and it like some of it i feel like was over the top and some of it i think was over the top for the comedic value yeah because it's super corny at times I, I feel like you know what i mean and it's very, you know, it's representative. It's supposed to be representative of Hollywood. Yeah. And, and, and I feel like Broadway-ish. Yeah. Maybe like, or, or old Hollywood. Yeah. I, I should say. Because it's never told like when. What era yeah. is you're actually set in. And I don't even, even, I don't even can remember if there's any scenes with vehicles in them that would date it that I can recall. Can you? I don't know. Cause no, I don't know. Cause most of it. Definitely takes place indoors. Yeah, it's indoors, and then at and, the mansion. The pool, yeah, the mansion and the, like the pool. And yeah, stuff. so and those man, you know, uh, the, it's an old style mansion anyway, so that yeah. wouldn't give away. Um, that wouldn't give away anything. No, and they no. don't use any modern, you know, even modern things up until that point. Um, weaponry, you know. Yeah, no, they're using kind of well household stuff yeah, except like, for the like, shotgun. Yeah, it's shotgun. <laughs> then you got a shovel. Yeah, the and fall then, down the stairs. I mean, it's all kind of yeah, a, a little slapstickish. No, it's very kind of slapstickish yeah. for sure. Yeah, and again, just enough corniness. And I wonder, uh, you know, I wonder if they had to make it comedy-ish to release it if it came out of the crypt storyline to even release it because that goes right back to what we were talking about with. We'll think about the review of Killing Zoe, which was what did we say, ninety two, ninety three, yeah. or something. Yeah, uh, about it being too violent and gory. So think about this storyline. I mean, chick gets a hole blown through her. You know what I mean? Chick and, and falls down the stairs, and she's all like, "Yeah, her yeah. neck's all crinkled back." <laughs> yeah, um, you know, oh, yeah, and twisted her, around. Yeah, and, and, and at one point, she hits her with her shovel, shovel in her neck. It goes all the way back, doesn't it? Yeah, doesn't yeah. To, that's when she twisted, doesn't it? Yeah, it, it put me in mind too of uh, and I, it well actually just now and as far as that kind of stuff as like Beetlejuice, yeah, kind of uh, graphic in a way. Yeah, not not quite as much. I mean, you know, the dude doesn't have the stretched out face. You know, love that movie, classic. That's a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. So, uh, what what was you you like the characters pretty well? Yeah, I like the characters pretty well. You know, if if you if you view it as as for the comedic value yeah. uh, that it is. Like if I if I hired all three of these leads, I, for the most part, not that I can recall, I I would have been pleased with their performances. Yeah, for what they you were, know, yeah, for, you know, for what it was. Um, sure. You know, I don't think anything it, it it didn't blow me out of out of the water. No, but I don't either. think anyone did a bad job or a poor job, um, as far as their acting goes. No. Um. You know, I, I, uh, 
It just wasn't, I mean, the characters, they're memorable, but the, the big, the most memorable thing I, I mentioned it on the way over here that I that I remember from the movie was was Bruce. Well, not is one of the most memorable things I took from the movie was Bruce Willis's character is always like, oh boy, oh boy, yeah, oh boy. <laughs> just like, like his oh trademark boy. line. It's like his trademark line is throughout the whole movie. Oh boy, but he's saying it all the time, like oh boy. And we both had mentioned where we can't remember what he looks at, but at one point he does like this double take. Yeah, and you said you thought you may have rewound it, watched it again too. Yeah, I just I don't. I don't even know why I rewound it, just to see, did he do that? So, I'm glad that he did it, because yeah. it was noticeable. Yeah, and it's kind of funny. It is kind of funny. <laughs> like You know, and some of the, the moments that are funny, it's that, it's that slapstick humor, you know? It's that Tom Green kind of humor. Yeah. For, if we do another throwback to the 90s, you know what I mean? But it's that... And, uh, Chick falls down the steps, and while you know it, that you're like, "Oh my, it's cringy as hell." You're like, "Oh, exactly," laughing, half laugh, cringy. You know, it's why we watch Wipeout reels. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean on Joel, YouTube. Oh. Like, oh Ooh. Jesus. Yeah. I said, <laughs> man, I've seen some today. Have you ever seen the ones like you'll you'll you know like you're watching it and then you just know how it's going to end, so you just scroll away yeah. real fast, like, but your oh, body still it, jerks to it. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Oh. Well, because the thing about watching Wipeout Reels is, depending on who releases, like, how cringy is yeah. this going to be? Like, I don't want to watch, I don't necessarily want to watch people wipe out. I don't know why we do that either. Like, as human beings, you know, it's like with train derailments. For some reason, I can think for the longest time as a kid, or even even just not as a kid, even as young adult, it's like, for some reason, I just wanted to see a train derail, man. I didn't want to be any. I don't want anybody to be injured or nothing. But right, like you've been up where I lived before, so like part of me like half imagined that there was no houses there. Oh yeah, I see see a train just like. But why? Be, it's, yeah. it's the same thing that like we slow down when there's a car accident. I mean, obviously you have to, but yeah. you're like you know, just trying to look see and as much see, as you, can. you know, yeah, and like I don't know why we like in the movie Nightcrawler. Have you ever watched that one? Oh, is that the one with uh, Jake Gyllenhaal? Yes, where yeah. he's the reporter dude. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah, that's a good. No, I yeah. We'll, we'll write that. I, a I, of these. Write that that's a, that's a down. Good that is a good one. I've only seen it once, maybe twice, but no, it's definitely a good one. And it's pretty dark, twisted stuff. Man. Yeah, but which those are some of the best movies. I mean, it just speaks to the human psyche, I guess. That seems like that's the movies that. Uh, like, I wonder if you ranked genres, like statistically speaking, where. The most viewership or highest, like theater sales, do you think it lies in like comedies, dramas, thrillers, box office sales? Yeah, um, action with ah, sure. action and adventure with superhero movies. Yeah, dominating and Top Gun Maverick. That's in two thousand twenty-two. Wow. Um, in the nineties, however, it was divided because in the summer you would have mainly the blockbusters. You sure, know, absolutely. you'd have you know uh, Mission Impossible, The Rock you know, Twister, things like that. In the September and October, you would have more thrillers and drama. Um, the dramas would be more toward like November and December to try to get like awards. Oh, sure, sure, sure. And then sure. in January and February, they would always release movies they didn't expect to do well, typically. Huh. And then in the spring, they would release like romantic comedies and they would always do counter, counter programming. Oh, sure, sure. You know, you would have... Uh, you know, you would have, I'm trying to think, you would have like maybe, um, you know, Star Wars Episode One, The Phantom Menace. And then on the flip side, you have uh, My Best Friend's Wedding comes out. Ah, uh, you know, right. Things okay. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, and then uh, as a third option, you might have South Park, Bigger, Longer, and Uncut. Huh. You know, but as far as sales taking out, I mean, romantic comedies used to make the easiest money. Sure. Because it was low cost. You know, you spend 20, 30 million, and then they usually would double. Yeah. Um, but in the in the modern era, a lot of romantic comedy goes straight to streaming. Straight to streaming, which so, is what's happened with just a, a lot of stuff. Just movies in general, which just goes back to what you were saying yeah. earlier in the show about being able to watch. I mean, there's just so many movies available in streaming stuff that yeah. it's like, you, I get overwhelmed sometimes, to be honest. There's with you. almost too much to choose from sometimes, you know. If I don't go in with something like, all right, I'm in the mood for 
a specific thing. I have yeah. the hardest time picking out movies to watch sometimes. Me too. Me too. Like sometimes I like it. What's it's part of the reason I've kind of enjoyed doing this show because we're doing some kind of older movies. It's like cool. I don't have to search for something. It's like these movies. It's oh man, I get the feeling of nostalgia from it too. You know. Yeah. Uh, and this movie, it's like I know this is probably going to be a good movie. You know, and uh, but yeah, no, it's hard to find movies. I think you know, and so. again, just so many streaming services. You know, I mentioned that one to you that uh, um, I still see you. Mm -hmm. which I definitely think is worth doing. Yeah, that's right. You sent me the trailer to that. The yeah, and it's on Freevee. Um, and, and I, like I said, it has a pretty decent cast. It Dermot Mulroney, what did we say? Uh, Bella Thorne yeah. was yeah. in it. Um, perhaps it. No, I, I was thinking Christopher Lloyd, but that was, in, that was in something else I was watching. Mythic Quest on Apple TV, also worth checking out. Yeah, you mentioned it's a that series, It's too. a series, but it's, it's, it's a good one. I, I get kind of critical of series. Uh, but it's held my interest pretty good. I think I'm into maybe the fourth season. Oh, that's pretty cool then. How many episodes each season? Like 10, 12? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're typical. What it, it's entertaining though. It's funny. It's smart. Uh, very current. Okay. So, but yeah, I mean, definitely worth checking out. Definitely. We'll give that a, a watch. Cracks me up. Do you have any, uh, favorite or least favorite scenes in Death Becomes Her? Um... I mean, I, I don't know. I think a lot of the standout scenes are what would be considered the graphic scenes, yeah. you know. And we've only, you know, we've only loosely like because what kind of what ends up happening? You can see, the show kind of happened the way I thought it would have branched off with other stuff. Yeah. But and to bring it like to play the movie out a little bit, what happens with these two women? Chick ends up. I can't remember how she ends up meeting the woman with Ernest. Well, with oh. that has the immortality potion. Oh, uh, so here's what she does. She um she tries to get in to um to get Botox, but she's already been in there right a few weeks before. Right, that's right. And she starts crying. Yes, and then this other guy, this like haughty toddy guy, comes in. The fancy guy shoots his assistant out and gives her the card yes. to go see the lady. That's right. So she goes sees sees the lady isn't going to take it and then because it's basically it. going to cost her all, all everything. everything yeah yeah everything basically and so then through the series of the story you find out how old isabella rosalini's character is and she's like super old looks crazy young um how oh no it? no no they did like a thing didn't they where she like cut herself yeah. or something and then put some of the she cut herself with the uh like it looked like a old style envelope opener Something yes, like that again, dating the movie to like old Hollywood, yeah, kind of style. And then she dipped a little bit in the potion and yes. put it on her finger, and then and she saw how young and her hand, whole yeah. hand like spread out her hand. And but so she does. Here's it. what here's what got me though. So it'll it'll heal a cut, but it had no effect when she had the hole through her, which I know that's completely different, a hole in a cut. Sure, but it would seem like logically. If it can heal a cut, it would be able to heal other wounds. Anything else. If you drink the whole bottle. If you drink the whole bottle. But all that stuff happened prior to to drinking it. True, maybe. too. So it's kind of run. That's true. It's like, cause, well, because she, well, she tells Meryl Streep's character, you know, take care of your body. That's true. Tells I her, did you know, think of that. You're going to live forever, but you got to take care of your body. Um, That's true. And then, of course, you find out as the story progresses, because like we mentioned like we mentioned earlier, uh, Goldie Hawn's character looks like basically average girl next door at the beginning of the movie. Ernest is in love with Meryl Streep's character, who's the fading Hollywood star. Stage actress, yeah. Stage actress now, like, doing the Vegas show corny. Probably all of Broadway or something. She, well, <clears throat> and the show is about herself. She was singing about herself. The song she was singing was about her. You know what I mean? She's like... Real oh, yeah, it's called Me. Me, yeah. No, right. Uh, that's what the whole, you know. So she's doing this whole Broadway, off-Broadway show about herself. Uh, very narcissistic. Yeah, you know what I mean? yeah. Um, Self-indulgent. But, uh, yeah, there's the and so, right there. and then, then Goldie Hawn's character. So Ernest ditches Goldie Hawn's character, goes for Meryl Streep's. Goldie Hawn's character gets all big and fat and stuff. Uh and then comes back and is all Fits. more flat and curvy yeah. and uh, catches Ernest's eye once again. Yeah, and Meryl Streep's, you know what I mean? 
and has lost all the weight, red hair, you know, it looks great. Uh, but you find out basically that she's also uh, taken this immortality yeah. potion and how that, how that rolled back her weight loss and stuff, you, you know, I don't know. Yeah, and we that. never really find out exactly the process she goes through. To have taken it. Yeah, we no, only you see don't. it through uh, Meryl Streep's eyes. It, correct, yeah. correct. And then and then they drag Ernest in there later because, uh, well, because what happens, they uh, they don't take care of their bodies. No, because well, they're, Meryl Streep's. They're, they're basically fighting over Ernest. Yes. Um, physically. End up hitting one with a shovel. One gets a hole blown through with a shotgun, and then they and they're come. all they're still alive, but yeah. their bodies are just messed up now. Yeah, and they they come to um oh, Ernest was working in uh he was doing makeup for uh for celebrities funerals and celebrities yeah. and stuff. That's what it was yeah. because in the end. Like they're fighting over him in the beginning. By the end, they want to keep him alive forever because their bodies are falling apart. Yeah, they keep peeling. The skin is peeling because they're, you know what I mean? Because he's doing makeup on him and stuff. You yeah. know what I mean? Like he would on a dead body. Yeah. Uh, prior, you know, to the viewing or whatever. Because that, and then they decide, hey, you know, because at one point they're like, well, we don't need Ernest. And then they're, yes. we, then they're like, oh, we do. We do. Because what are, we can't do this. Yeah. And then, uh, so that's how the chaos ensues. Sure to keep, well, because then they want to keep him alive forever. Yeah. So they take him to see the chick with the potion. You know, well, and she even says too at one point, excuse me, when she's, uh, when she's talking to, uh, I want to say Meryl Streep, that basically how this plays out is like, you, you go live this life, take care of your body, but in X amount of time, you just fade away. Yeah, need to relocate. And, and, yeah, and don't so be you seen. You don't be seen. Don't go out into society. And it makes sense because your body, like, it's probably gonna. I don't. I don't know. I don't know why that happened to them. Because I guess they, they died, but multiple times, probably multiple. Yeah, I mean, because it was. Yeah, but Ernest doesn't take the, uh, the potion. In fact, he ends up pouring the potion out. As he's hanging by his suspenders, yes, on the rail, or it's you know, yeah, I'd for, and, now, and now, then it just drops, and yeah, yeah. Well, see, I in in my recollection before I'd rewatched it, it seemed to me when I was younger that Ernest got that potion way earlier, and that's almost yeah. at the end of the movie. That's like the last fifteen minutes of the movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. And like I, right before that, I think leading up to that, I think is where I got dozy, because I started kind of half dozing off. I remember when I woke up, or kind of refocused, I should say. Uh, Ernest, I want to say, had the potion. He was like making his way to the party because they had ended up, but I couldn't remember. Yeah, he makes his way through the party. How exactly like they all ended up there? Right. Like where? How did they all? Because it, it's you could tell it's a private party going on for all these people that have taken have probably. taken this potion now. Yeah, yeah. And they Ernest not, they has knock, not. They knock Ernest out, uh, and then he wakes up there. Okay, at her pool. Okay, got it. Got it. Yeah, they knock him out. So yeah, uh, he, he doesn't take it, and so they end up not having Ernest. He's dead because the movie. Or the movie closes with them at his at his funeral. Yeah, and talking about that little was known about Ernest before fifty two years old, but he lived a full and well rounded life, full to the full extent. He had like a new you know new wife, four kids. Yeah, he'd climb like Mount Everest. <laughs> you know he'd uh, you know given all this charity, and then at the end he was like, and uh, he will live forever through his donations through blah 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 yeah. blah. And then they're at the end, they're like, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, they're all... Behind the black veils. Yeah, yeah. And then they, they go outside and, and trip on a spray can and fall down the steps. Yeah, and, and uh, shatter. Yeah. And that's where it gets... Uh, they're it's, all brittle now. Just And it's just like a head rolling, arms, but they're still yeah. alive. Which you is, guys are you know, still alive. Which is, you know, again, it's supposed to... It's a, it's a dark comedy. Yeah. But I don't know, because, like, when I think of dark comedies, like, in today's, like, my concept now, I don't even know if that I'd call it, like, what, 
I guess it's dark in the sense of what the, the topic is, perhaps. Yeah, perhaps. But it's it really not very dark. No. It's very kind of satirical, yeah. and like cracking on Hollywood. Well, that's, see, that's one reason we even decided to choose this because we wanted to choose a lighter movie. Yeah, which is yeah, which it, and then we choose a dark comedy. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> but which I turns was, out, like I said, wasn't too no, dark, not too dark. Dark, really. Again, it could be a very good dark movie. You yeah. know what I mean? And it could one have been a very remaking. It could have been a very good dark movie with that cast yes if it, they would have taken it a different direction uh, yeah less like you could have had some cool funny moments yeah but uh tone it down quite a bit yeah make it a more less comedic yeah. more uh in the realism i guess as uh, yeah, realism, yeah. realistic as you can be score in the music you know i gotta be honest i assumed because it opens up with a big musical tune yeah that it would have great score throughout but other than the opening uh, song, which we played tonight, yeah, I, I I I recognized it immediately. Yeah, but um, there's no other memorable scores that I could find. I mean, I looked no, on Spotify not that I can... and I looked on YouTube, and I couldn't find really, anything. Nothing else. that pops out even from it. No. Wow. And watching it from recollection, there wasn't a lot of standout music in it. No. And this has been one of the only films that we've dove into where it's been like that. Yeah, there wasn't anything. See, it's hard to think anything really. The most, I feel like the most standout thing, honestly, that I've taken from this movie, I didn't even know until we started the show. And it was about, like, I was discussing about the costume look and how it just looked kind of, yeah. but unbeknownst to me at the time, that was actually like high tech. Right. The what f- they did for that being the first yeah being the first use of that kind of stuff which yeah. turned into what was used in jurassic park yeah um and i so i didn't know that but th- i mean that's a big deal yeah, for which this, i so. didn't know before i did a little bit of research on the no episode, and so that so yeah you know if you don't know that as the movie watcher which but again like if we put ourselves in that time frame like at the time even what they were doing is there any movie that you can think of that really has whether it be based on that plot line right or premise that has that kind of like somebody with like a hole blown through them like that and it is it is like a hole i mean it's a big head yeah i mean it's a big hole blown through her you know so you know special effects in 92 at that time that might have you know might have been a big deal i can't remember what my reaction was you know i was like at the time i must have been 15 maybe well see i, I do remember when i rewatched the trailer they did show the gunshot in the trailer they huh. showed goldie hunt going across the into the water and yeah stuff. and so i don't i don't think they showed the actual bullet the hole in her yeah but i remember going in and seeing it and i remember um oh there there you know there's the hole where she was shot and I don't remember my reaction to it as a kid. No, I don't. I don't you know, I, I I was and twelve. Could have been when I saw it. I mean, it could have been a big deal then. Like, whoa, that's you know. But it was something apparently that I wanted to see because we actually went to see it. Yeah. And uh, and I always saw movies that I wanted to see for the most part. So, but as an adult, um, the musical score wasn't there for me. No. Um, originality, like we mentioned earlier, I thought it was original. No, I think, again, I think it's original enough that... Basically it would even be thing, original in today's... In today's climate, uh, or, you know, today's society, the time frame, but I would take it, like we've said multiple yeah. times with this, yeah. um, in a different direction. And yeah, you could, probably, you could probably take that exact same script almost. And I'm surprised they really haven't. I know. I've right. never even heard even a mention of possible remake ever. Which is crazy. Out of all the it things seems they like remake they could... point break, but they don't even talk about remaking this. I know. Like why would you remake point break? I don't know. I don't I don't know that I even realized they did. That's seems... That's how that's how little people cared. Yeah, no, like why would you? That's, that's like an like iconic a... movie. And there's nothing really? wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with no, it as far as the cast, that, the that acting, kind of movie. The, every, it's perfect. I mean, it's a perfect movie for what it is. Yep. And uh, so, yeah. So why not at least attempt to do this? Yeah. I, I don't know. Because it would be good. They, they could take it. I mean, t- they could do Tales from the Crypt, 
death becomes her. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, Nicole, it would work. Do it, man. They totally could. So, HBO Max should, should totally do it. Do it. I yeah. mean, especially it came out of that anyway. You know, they should do a lot of things like that, like properties like Death Becomes Her, or some of these other things that we've heard or uh, that I've read about in the past. Um, that they they are tales from the crypt episodes, but that they were originally going to be. They should HBO Max should do like a six episode, yeah, you know, series. And maybe that's something. where maybe that's where the problem lies. Why it was so slow at times could be because they took something that was supposed to be like a TV episode and turned it into a feature. Turned it into a feature. Yeah, that's a good point. Like, yeah, I did think there wasn't enough story to. Fill out an hour. And, I mean, it's yeah. it's it's over an hour and a half. Yeah, I think it's, it's a, a longer movie. Yeah. Um, but not enough to to really. It, it I mean, been you can only you can only you can only have two women killing each other so many times. Yeah. Before, before it's, it's redundant. redundant. Yes, exactly. So, uh, would you recommend Death Becomes Her? Um, as a rewatch in its current form, I I don't know. Would you and, watch it again? Uh, no, I didn't. Actually, I considered it, and and I didn't. I mean. You know, I, I don't I don't know. I'd rather watch the remake that we've talked about. Yeah, me too. Studios, you need to do the remake. Now, do Adam I, makes films. <laughs> do I dislike Death Becomes Her? No, I don't dislike no, it. No, I didn't dislike it, not, but not my favorite. Would I watch it again? Not in the next year. I might watch it within the next 10 years. Sure. You know, maybe five. That even that feels like a Steve Stanley. <laughs> but listen, I only say that I don't say that to knock the movie. I right. say that it goes it goes directly back to there's a lot of movies that come out now. Yeah. Um in movies to the point where you know, it goes back to technology even that it's just becoming easier and easier and easier for people to create content yeah. of any form and distribute it. Um you know, how long before we have a feature length film put out by you even that's filmed completely on mobile devices. Yeah. Cause I mean, they're already very much involved in filmmaking. Yep. 100%. Um, and I know that I've done enough research and I've read enough to know that filmmakers, they love using them because it allows you angles and, and stuff access to you, places you could you, never get to with a, with a regular camera. Yeah. And so, yeah, why not? I mean, it just seems a matter of time in between that and Apple and, and software, it's, I mean, sky's the limit. Sky is the limit. And there's going to be so many movies that, and they're all going to be good Yep. because technology is going to keep expanding. It keeps getting more accessible mm -hmm. to where, I mean, we, we now have access to stuff that the studios, be it film, music, have been using for decades yeah. to create all this stuff. It's that almost we've like watched, the same playing and field we now. We practically have, that stuff in our hands now yep. especially with ai and and just all kinds of other things coming into it that i mean yeah it's gonna be crazy it is and there's gonna be a lot of good there's a lot of good artists out there uh in in all kinds of industries that you'd never hear of yeah uh if it wasn't for these facebook and stream yard yeah all this all, all the, the youtube and all that and so I think it's kind of awesome <laughs> personally, yeah. uh, but there's a lot of it. So like, how do you filter through it? I don't know. Yeah. So that's a whole nother thing though. You know, I, um, I would say, you know, death becomes her, I guess has its, uh, lovers or not haters. No, I'm, but, I wouldn't um, say I'm a hater. You know, you can do some research on it. It's got some good scenes. It's got a few laughs. It's a little slow in some places. Um, you know, that's about all I have to say about yeah, it. That's, you know, it, I didn't it, feel that I wasted my time. But like Casey, I I did I had to go back and rent it, um, and it was only three ninety nine. Did I feel like I wasted three ninety nine? No, I don't feel like I wasted it. Yeah, but I wouldn't spend three ninety nine again. No, right, and it's one of those no. movies. Don't put it on if you're wanting to watch a film. Yeah, because it's not a film. No, it's no. a straight up movie. It's one of those movies. Uh, you can put it on half background you can kind of half have another conversation going on over here you don't have to like totally keep up with yeah. it yeah you know yeah. what i mean because look over lots, every once in a while no yeah you can get up and go to the fridge come play back play some uno or something <laughs> yeah i mean because <laughs> uh, yeah again you know it's got some funny parts and then there's a lot of gaps yeah and i think um, the uh the 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 opening um couple segments are um they could be chopped up a little sure chopped down and, and make a little shorter yeah it would have been good it would have it would have been good as a tales from the crypt episode yeah 
I, I mean, so it really too. probably would have done better. So, uh, yeah, it's been a good, uh, fun night tonight. No, it has, especially given, you know, I yeah. think we stayed on the movie on. on yeah, topic. I think so. See, everyone, we just have a small it. little itinerary that just has bullet points, basically. Yeah. Uh, and a few little facts and such. But we, I uh, think we pulled it off quite nicely. No, so yeah, please yeah. go and check out the social media pages. We have Absolutely. the YouTube, Spotify, and um, Facebook. The um, It'll be up tomorrow on podcast and YouTube. Yeah. Also, please go check out In Dreams. It's streaming now online, and it's possibly going to be playing on Tubi TV in the future as well. Nice. So that'll it'll be probably nice. be a um, an alternate version. There's going to sure. be a couple of those floating around because yeah. I have to chop it down to 15 minutes for uh, yeah for the Knoxville Film Festival. Oh, there's something to be said for alternate versions. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Marketing so, there. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I love it. So no, next yeah, it definitely week, works. We're gonna do uh, we're gonna do pump up the volume. Next uh, yes, week. keeping it nostalgic and old school. It's one of my favorites. Yeah, and, and this will it be is... the first one movie that uh, I haven't seen that we're going into. I haven't nice. Seen this. Oh, super. I've oh, it should seen, be good. I I know of it. Um, You'll like it. It's Pirate Radio. I didn't read the uh, the Pretty complete much, yeah. Wikipedia synopsis because I didn't want to yeah. know how it ended. So I'm just going in with a vast little bit of knowledge, not vast, but a little bit of knowledge that I that I know. And then in the future, we're going to also check out Lost Highway, Nightcrawler, and um, the. I the, still see you. I still see. Oh, I have that one written on there too. Yeah. That's if you cool. want to revisit that one, I'll, t- I'll totally watch it again. So, yeah, we could definitely do point, those. At some point down the road, that's worth checking out. And also. Well, I'm looking forward to pump up the volume. Yeah, me too. Good yeah. Christian Slater. He's yeah. also in a, a, oh, a very underrated movie called. Um, we might have mentioned it Very Bad Things. Oh, I don't know that we did mention okay. it. That's a wild okay. movie. Okay. But it's funny because uh, I know we're, we're getting close, close to time, but I pump up the volume and popped in my head the other day that I mentioned it to you. I was at work and at Black Bear Barbecue in Appalachia, yeah. Virginia. <laughs> where, where, Eat Black uh, Bear. <laughs> yeah, go go on their Facebook and check out. Um, yeah, check it out. The uh, Black Bear Barbecue and Grill. Yeah, Appalachia, Virginia on Facebook. Uh, of course, it'll have our hours, our weekly specials up there every day, live music. Uh, every Saturday, sometimes on Fridays. Uh, it's good stuff. And listen, if you're getting kind of, it's the only, it's not the only legit barbecue around. Uh, there's a good gentleman down in Lee County uh, also has some great barbecue. Uh, but as far as like Wise County goes and stuff, uh, it's good. Okay. You know what I mean? I, tying back to the menu episode, uh, I do restaurants. Of course, I work at Black Bear, but so I'm going to shameless plug for where I work, but uh, it's legit good yeah. place. The atmosphere is great. Um, it's new, you know, it's in its second year, so shameless plug. And it's a, a pretty much, it's a happening place in Appalachia. No, for sure. You like know it really I mean? is like you, you were, they brought in some new, uh, what chairs and tables in. Oh yeah. Well, you know, when they closed the pizza hut, that's a story. Like I don't want to get into pizza hut right now, but, but well, I found it interesting. I found it interesting though, that when they closed down that pizza hut, well, and I'll just say this cause it's an interesting thing. Okay. I, I just, to get it so it was like lawsuit thing so apparently so this pizza hut in big stone gap uh it got shut down and the way the way i understand it happened is i thought i thought it was almost a planned thing but from my understanding it wasn't pizza hut corporate came in because they were due for an update basically you know on this you know the look and modernizing and stuff and that they went in and closed it immediately and the next day it was no longer open Wow. Yeah, and that's pretty crazy. And now and now the red roof is black. Really? The sign, the plastic sign, you know, plexiglass sign or whatever is busted out. It's gone completely. Like no sign, nothing that would iconically suggest that it was a pizza hut anymore. Wow. Nothing. Black roof, black painted black roof. And I was like, wow, that's crazy. I yeah, so I was like, I didn't realize that Pizza Hut's roof was would have been considered that iconic. And so I don't know that I don't know that pizza hut like made them do it but i would imagine they probably yeah, did sounds like it um because now it was just whoever owned the building wow now. but uh yeah but we scooped up some stuff because it was crazy because that pizza hut like i don't want to knock it you used to i remember in high school because i graduated from Powell valley um that was the place i mean it was the happening place when i first moved up here from florida um you know mid 90s and stuff and it, it didn't do much after of course it, back then it was like the only pizza there was a domino's yeah at one point but you couldn't eat in the domino's you know it was just carry out yeah stuff. that's but, right um and that was it but now there's a bunch of pizza places now but 
Yeah, that's wow. one other topic. But we'll yeah, have to, so we'll the have plug to, eat it. We'll have to go Christmas. back in. Well, if you, if you do the the uh, we do a show Saturdays on eighty eight point seven and ten. Um, when we don't go live, this show airs there. Right. Um, so if they're listening to this, this is the show that you're listening to. <laughs> yeah, right. So this means we're not live. Sorry, everyone. Right. right. Yes. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> Um, we'll have to dig into that on the other people's show because that sounds like that could be a fun topic. No, no, yeah, again, and we could talk about uh, like fading restaurants and stuff and some that you know yeah, iconic ones that aren't I mean, around anymore. Yeah, um, definitely a good conversation. I think and, so and, too. Uh, in restaurants, see, we should save that for another one. Yeah. It's interesting the way that restaurants in in this local area have kind of blown up because towns have taken to taxing it. Yeah. It's become a, a driving force for for tax revenues in these towns. So there are a lot of restaurants opening, and there's a lot of towns are taking the grant money that they have for uh, you know development, and they're they're putting it into restaurants. Yeah. So all these restaurants are opening up, and a lot of people are getting money. There's grant money. Uh, people that have connections uh, play a big role. Let's right. just be honest. Right. Yeah. Uh, and politics, uh, but now you got people with money opening restaurants with this grant money and town money or and whatever avenues that don't know anything about, about the industry, you know what I mean? Um, or how to run one. And so you've got these lackluster, half lackluster restaurants that are probably not going to last. Right. Um, they'll, they'll hit their high point uh, for a little bit, but then they'll just, they'll die just kind of fade. They'll, they'll, they'll die out unless you, you know, do something. I don't Unless know, somebody you know actually know I mean? knows how to go in and run it. And, and right run it, yeah, I know. So I've thought, I've thought about trying to market myself as a restaurant consultant. That would be before because I mean I've got. I mean, why not? Yeah, I because I'm I'm gotten really good at streamlining and just improving. I mean, it's it's like what I do. Right, right. Restaurant is just it can be a good restaurant. I'm going to improve it. So right, right. Find what because you actually care. Yeah, sure. And, and I work you, them. Yeah. So like, how does it, you know, work smarter, not harder? Yeah. I mean, that is one of the greatest things ever. It's true. Uh, I've really enjoyed this episode. I did. I did, too. Yeah, it was it's a good. good episode. I'm looking forward to next week. Always. Um, everyone have a good night. Yeah, good night, everybody. Bye-bye.